we're very grateful that you've agreed to accept this assignment from the president. And I look forward to working to make this transition from your present job to the next job as smooth as possible. We intend to go through a thorough uh, process. It is, however, not a rush to judgment, and we'll have an opportunity to examine the Solicitor General's uh, credentials. And so it begins. Elena Kagan heads to Capitol Hill. And am I the only one who's missing Harriet Myers right now? Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News and Washington Post Top Line. I'm David Challion. And I'm Rick Klein. We're here each weekday bringing you the very latest political headlines, reporting, insight, analysis, everything you need and want to know about politics. And you know where to find us on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash the note. Let us know what you think. Get us started, sir. What's your top line? Incumbents beware. This time a Democrat falls. It's Congressman Alan Mollahan of West Virginia who loses in a Democratic primary where his ties to Washington, his support for the health care bill, all came under harsh scrutiny. And this, of course, comes in the wake of Bob Bennett's loss in Utah over the weekend. Next up, Arlen Specter and Blanche Lincoln in the big challenge for incumbents. We're just seeing, as we said, it's not just warning signs anymore. These are big flashing signals. If you are an incumbent, and especially if you're one polling under 50 percent right now, you are doing nothing short of freaking out. Taking the Hill. That is what Elena Kagan is doing today. She's going to meet with eight senators, and I know we only get to see the photo ops, folks, but do not underestimate how important these meetings are behind closed doors. This is exactly as Rick referenced earlier, where Harriet Myers lost the confidence of Republicans in 2005. This is where Sotomayor really dazzled some senators, and these meetings matter. They do, and it, they're, they're called courtesy calls, although they're, they're just part of what you have to do as a nominee right now. And it, Harriet Myers, we saw the big problems that in her nomination emerged out of these meetings. Uh, Elena Kagan, uh, we presume, will be fine in these kind of conversations, but it is those initial reactions that will be critical. Climate change. One last push for major comprehensive co climate and energy bill is going on today. Senators Kerry and Lieberman, but not Senator Graham, are putting forward their proposal to, to in institute a, a new system that would... Uh, actually, there's some changes to what they, what they had originally discussed because they're trying to take advantage of the headlines a little bit and uh, make sure that states can veto other states' offshore drilling within certain margins. But i, I got to say, even for the concessions, there's not a lot of people who are giving this much of a chance. There's sort of a wait-and-see approach from Senate leadership to see if something changes changes in the political climate that can allow this to happen. And they're trying to avoid that cap and tax uh, claim that the Republicans have sort of put on every kind of energy policy coming out from the Democrats. And finally, in the arena, yes, John Thune dipped his toe into 2012 presidential waters last night. He addressed a gathering of state party chairmen at the Republican National Committee annual meeting. He is, of course, the dragon slayer who beat Majority Leader Tom Daschle in 2004. He drew new, no Democratic opponent this year for his reelect. He's got six and a half million in the bank, Rick, and now he's setting his sights beyond the borders of South Dakota. And it's the John Kerry situation exactly where you're able to reload a little bit earlier than everyone else and, and do it. And he can sit and wait for a good amount of time. He will immediately be a frontier contender. And he says he really wants to be a national uh, voice inside the Republican Party this year for the midterms. We're going to begin with the Elena Kagan nomination. We taped an interview just a little bit ago with Senator Ted Kaufman, a member of the Judiciary Committee. He's a Democrat from Delaware. Senator Kaufman, thanks much for being here. Uh, we appreciate it. I want to begin, obviously, you have been through a bunch of these uh, right. Supreme Court confirmation hearings on the staff side, working with uh, now Vice President Biden, then Senator Biden. You actually even worked with uh, Elena Kagan, yes. uh, I believe. So yeah. uh, when you worked with her, tell us, what did you come to know about her? And does sure. it make sense to you that this is now someone nominated no. for the high court? Yeah, no, she was special. What, what we did uh, when Senator Biden was chairman of the Judiciary Committee, uh, Vice President Biden was chairman of the Judiciary Committee, he was a senator, every time we dealt with a Supreme Court nominee, and he dealt with just about all the present sitting Supreme Court nominees, either as chairman or ranking member of the Judiciary, we would bring in an expert on constitutional law. Uh, Vice President Biden's an expert on constitutional law. He teaches it. But you really need somebody to come in every moment thinking about it. And we hired different people, and, we, and Elena Kagan came in and was on Judiciary Committee staff for the Ruth Bader Ginsburg nomination 93. She's an extraordinary person. I mean, just right out of the bat box, you realize that we've had a number in this area, we've had just the best people in the country come and advise us on this. And she clearly is right up there with them. She, uh, she's just very smart. She's very good at marshalling her, her arguments. Uh, she uh, is very good about organizing uh, her life. And uh, frankly, when she's working on an issue of your life, 
uh, she's just, uh, right then you knew that she was somebody extraordinary. But Senator, I, I'd imagine that a, a nomination like hers would raise particular challenges for a, a staffer or a member of the Judiciary Committee because she has no judicial record. How does, yeah. that, how does that affect the way that you approach a nominee like this, and is that a yeah. relevant criteria in your mind? Yeah. No, I, I, I called, and I've been calling for a while, for the fact that we get, other than just judges on the court, it's good to have judges on the court. Uh, but a Supreme Court, it's good also to have some, some, some thinkers, some people that have a different background. We now have nine, uh, if we appointed, if we, he had not picked Elena Kagan, we would have nine circuit court judges. That's too many. So I think she's coming on. So that, yes, she has no judicial, uh, uh, she has no a decision she's made as a judge, but uh, she has had extensive experience. She has a background. There's going to be plenty of things, I'm sure, for... Uh, for those in favor and opposed to talk about. So it's no, it's, I don't see that as being any problem. And I really think it's good that we have somebody with her experience uh, coming on the court. Senator, do you think she should uh, step down from her position as Solicitor General during this process and, and leave the administration basically to just be this nominee now? That's a good question. I don't know. I, and I don't know what the precedent is. That, I, had not, uh, I had not thought of that. Um, I, that, that's an interesting thought. I do not. I like to, when I speak about something, I like to know what I'm talking about. That I'd have to sit and think about. That's a good question. Uh, Senator, there's been some concern, as I'm sure you've heard, on the left about uh, what, her, what her judicial philosophy will yeah. be like. And, and yeah. some, some liberals saying, look, we, you know, we should be able to get a good, a good solid, uh, dependable yeah. vote on the court like conservatives yeah. would. What do you say to those critics that you know of her judicial philosophy, that you presume about her judicial philosophy? What, what kind of vote she'll be like? Well, I mean, it's a good question. I, I think uh, the fact that she worked uh, in the uh, Clinton administration, the fact that she worked for Joe Biden on the Judiciary Committee, I mean, you, you get some idea where political philosophy is coming from. Uh, but you never know who it is. I mean, after all, John Paul Stevens was picked by a Republican. He turned out to be clearly the most liberal member of the court. So you just don't know that. And I'm not big on that. I, I mean, I think it's important to have somebody that reflects the political philosophy of the president especially when the, when the last few nominees have so clearly been picked because of their ideological leanings that you really need some balance in the court. So I think that's important. I think Elena Kagan will be a great Supreme, I mean, not a good, a great Supreme Court justice. Uh, and I think she's gonna be very smart and I think there's gonna be some decisions she's probably gonna make that I may not agree with, but uh, I think she'll be great and I think she's got the right political philosophy and I think the president's made a, a great selection. Senator, very quickly, I want to turn your attention to financial regulatory sure. reform. Last week, we saw this wild ride yeah. in the stock market. Yeah. A, it, it corrected itself, but was that inherently a bad thing? Yep. And B, is there anything you can do in this bill to make sure that doesn't happen again? Well, what we're going to do, what they say they're going to do the bill, I had a letter that I, uh, I sent with uh, Senator uh, Warner from Virginia, you know, say, giving a whole list of things that we think uh, could be in the bill to have a study done by the Securities Exchange Commission and the CFTC in a what's going on. I think they're going to lean more towards, I think uh, Chairman Dodge leaning more towards having Jack Reed having some hearings. Jack Reed's a great senator. He's had a securities subcommittee. Think of that. No, I think this is a wake-up call. And I, I'm not, I don't know how to say this and not sound like I'm, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm good. I don't think I was that good. But last September, <laughs> I talked about this very, I mean, this very, very, in a speech I gave September on the floor of the Senate, I talked about this very thing. I testified before the Security Subcommittee about this very thing with the problems with high-frequency trading and turning over 70% of our trading to these, to these gigantic machines. I've also talked about uh, the problems with not, we removed the uptick rule on short selling and naked short selling, how short selling can play a role. There's a good indication that was going on. I've also talked about the fact that we've gone from two markets to 50 markets, and right. a lot of these markets are, are fragmented and do not have any requirement to deal with all the process. Fortunately, I wrote to the uh, SEC last year and said, let's look into market structure, and they agreed to do that. It's just, I, I, I would just like us to send us a, 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 an indication of how urgent this is. Right. It's not, and I think, by the way, I think last Thursday probably did it more than any, anything I could say or any politician could say. <laughs> the I think the SEC has yeah. gotten the message, uh, we cannot have this happen again. Uh, Senator, before we let you go, uh, sure. thoughts and prayers today with Bo Biden. I'm wondering yeah. if, you're, if you've been in touch yeah. at all with yeah. Bo or the Biden yeah. family, if you've yeah. heard any updates on his condition. Yeah. No, I think, I think he's fine. I think it's a, it was a, you know, anytime you, you have a stroke, it's a, it's a serious thing. But I think, I think he, will, uh, he will come through just fine. Thank you. Hey, Senator, are you going to miss this job when it's over? Uh, I'm gonna. Be, I'm really gonna miss parts of it, but there's loads of it that I'm not gonna miss. Uh, you know, I, I kind of did this. You know, I was here for 22 years. Uh, 
it's a, it was a great, wonderful opportunity. But I said right from the beginning, this right. is not, this, this is not, I'm 71 years old, you know? I mean, it's time to get some <laughs> new young people in here and do the job. Senator Ted Kaufman, Democrat of Delaware, thanks a lot for being with us, sir. Hey, thanks, David. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Take care.